This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Okie dokie. The hilly road to the clinic, with which I had never had difficulties before, was now torturous. Big beads of sweat formed on my brow, and at some point my breath had grown faint. The hatchet in my belt was heavy and made it hard to walk. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's gonna be a little hard to explain. Why do you have a hatchet wrapped in newspaper? <laughs> You know what? This is nice, though. He is risking putting himself in a mental institution just to save her, so I gotta hand him to give him that. The hatchet on my belt was heavy and made it hard to walk. I considered leaving it, but I couldn't let it go. At least not while Satoko's uncle was still breathing. He's not, though. The signboard for the Erie Clinic came into sight, but I quickly noticed something was odd, so I stopped. Several red and revolving lights were flashing at the clinic. Three police cars were parked in the parking lot with their lights on. There didn't need to be much else to inform me that something had happened. Oh no, did Coach actually die? I didn't want to see Coach, so I planned to leave Satoko in the clinic waiting room and give the receptionist a message. Oh! But, with that police officer we see here, I couldn't go inside so carelessly. Hi, hi, Satoko. It's, um, mm. Yeah, that's, that's a rough one. Oof, I don't like that one. Oof, I really don't like that one. You got her bruises there. Yikes. I don't like any of these sprays. I gently put Satoko in the shade of the thicket. I get that he doesn't want to be put into a mental institution, but he probably should at this point. <laughs> I'll be right back, I added, getting to my feet. Cautious of my surroundings, I hid myself behind a car and got closer to the officers grouped at the clinic's entrance. I overheard an officer wearing a necktie, probably their leader, and a white-robed doctor having a discussion about something. The doctor didn't seem to be coach. It was one of those who coach told to make the tea yesterday. <laughs> あなただったと。それでどんな感じだったんです。事務室 there's no way this guy killed himself to... No, he didn't believe Keiichi. He thought he was insane. What the heck? Coach, I... I knew you had issues. I didn't think you had, like, suicide issues. Based. Ah, he might not be dead. He might just be mostly dead. He might not be dead. He might just be mostly 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 dead. Just then, a radio in one of the police cars started to buzz, producing a broken, mechanical voice. Bruh, there's so many people dead. Suicide? What the heck were they talking about? Someone had committed suicide at the clinic. But who? I wish Takano-san dead and she died the next day. And yesterday, I wished Coach was dead. Then, could he have... I don't know if he's been drinking a lot or not. I don't know if he's been drinking a lot or not. Uh-oh, people weren't taking his jokes seriously. Oh, no, never mind. Coach killed himself. Why would he do that? There couldn't have been any reason he wanted to die. The only reason that came to mind was that I wanted him dead. This world was insane. If I wanted someone dead, they'd, they'd die. That was the kind of world this was. 
then what about Uisi? What happened to him? If people really died because I wanted them to, then something should have happened to him too. Uisi drove off the road in a fit of road rage and died. Oh, is this becoming death note? But without the note. <laughs> it's death note without the note. It's just death. Oi, the officers nodded and split up into the patrol cars. Did they just... Wait, did they just say searching for Uisi's car? Searching for his car. That meant... He'd gone missing? Takano-san, Coach, and Uisi, when I wished for it, the very next day, they disappeared. No matter how angry you were when you said someone you wished someone was dead, it didn't normally happen. Everyone knew just wishing for it wouldn't make them dead, and that's why people could utter such curses so lightly. But the curses I uttered were being granted. At that time, I hadn't even been walking, and yet... Tap. I heard a footstep. And it wasn't the only one this time. Tap. Tap. They came from behind, and they stood right behind me, reaching a hand for my shoulder. Would you mind... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mean to jump scare us, but there we go. That's true. She's the one who should be scared right now. It was Satoko. If logically, if you had to blame anyone for Weezy's death or disappearance, <laughs> uh, probably the owner of the random car he was checking. Probably. He probably got into a fit of road rage with the guy who was just like, He passed me! Oh, he can't pass me! I'm not pulling over! <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be right anymore. Quick, DX, predict the, that everyone lives happily ever after. At least out of the ones who's still alive. <laughs> her eyes were un still unstable and unfocused, but she seemed to be able to at least walk on her own now. She looked far better now compared to her earlier exhausted state. She gave a smile, a show of courage, but her legs were still shaky. <laughs> okay, I believe you. The vinyl chatter doesn't matter. I'm not even going to get to the final chapter until um, 2029. <laughs> At the rate I'm currently going. Uh-oh. Satoko was at a loss for words. Her face grew paler and paler, and I could tell she was doubting her own ears. Kate-san...それ...本当ですの?何かの聞き間違いじゃないんですの?た、確かにそう聞いたよ。入江先生が睡眠薬で自殺した... Oh, she ain't that well. Satoko went down on her knees and broke out in tears. Uso...嘘ですわ...あの... Maybe someone did kill him. I don't know how they'd force-fed him sleeping medication, but... As I watched Satoko crying and clawing at the grass, I felt myself trapped by guilt and remorse. I got so angry that Coach was treating me like a madman yesterday. That he'd betrayed me. That I'd thought he'd be better off dead. But even Coach, who to me deserved to die, still must have had people who loved and respected him. Like Satoko here. In... My selfish, egotistical anger, I wished for his death, and it was granted. And now Satoko was crying hysterically as a result. The guilt tore at my heart. I worked myself up to murder for Satoko's sake. I decided I wanted Satoko to be happy. But was that really all it took? Murder meant taking someone's life. It meant taking, making everyone attached to that person sad. In Satoko's uncle's case, of course, nobody would be sad. So I didn't feel a sense of guilt at all. But... Coach's death was different. I had wanted to make Satoko happy, and that had resulted in me inflicting a deep sadness upon her, hadn't it? But Coach killed himself. It wasn't my... <laughs> Satoko still hadn't stopped crying, but she seemed to be a little calmer now. Wiping her tears, she stood up. She's been having a really bad month. <laughs> And the only thing I could think to say to her was an apology. 
俺昨日監督とその喧嘩してお前なんか死んじまえって呪ったんだ呪ったから本当に死んじゃって So Tucker looked at me dubiously for a few moments. Eventually, her expression softened and she interpreted my words in her own way. Yeah, exactly. He, as, even if he made some creepy comments, it's clear that he did care for Satoko, and it's, the feeling is probably mutual. She smiled a little, trying to comfort me. Yeah, that would be good. It's true. The 07, the 07 mod people remade Satoko's sprite in the Steam version to look like the console one. If you play the not modded version, it looks like the OG one. Okay. As long as she has a towel in all of the versions. Satoko readjusted her bath towel and started back along the path. Her stride was wobbly, and it didn't look like she'd recovered as much as she let on. She don't want to go into the clinic. At first, Satoko tried to go back home, but it was the time of the morning when people were going to school and to work. So after seeing people walking around, she thought better of it. She must have been pretty embarrassed wearing only the towel. That's not a bad idea. Satoko noticed how I was hanging my head and spoke to me. Hmm. At first, I thought it was a coincidence, but with three people now, I couldn't discard the possibility. There was no such thing as impossible in this world. I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Satoko seemed to be having trouble breathing, but she still tried to listen to what I had to say. Let's get her the help she needs first before we, before we trauma dump on her. みんなと遊んだ。らしいですわね。あの時は取り乱して申し訳ありませんでしたわね。Rika's <笑> going to be like, "Oh yeah, of course." Like she's going to take it in stride, but yeah, she's probably secretly going to be like, "Uh, I'm like, Keiichi, it's not normal for you to take like naked girls here." <笑> so Toko remembered how she blew up at me at class yesterday and bowed to me a little. 実は俺祭りに行っていないって言ったら Satoko looked at me confused. She couldn't help it, of course. それ本気ですの? This probably isn't the time to be telling her this. Get her the help she needs. No, no, because Keiichi has zero awareness. I know I'm not very socially aware, but, like, for crying out loud. Even I'm not this dense. When you're more dense than I am, you got a problem. The blood drained from Satoko's expression. そうなんだ。最初は。Oh, took a long and hard look at me. Maybe she was doubting my sanity. Coach did the same thing. I mean, why wouldn't he after telling him this? The more I thought about it, the more I was unable to endure the feeling of my hatred for Coach had been meaningless. You know, Let's switch up. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe this is not the best, but uh, let's switch over temporarily. Satoko 
記憶になく祭りに出かけたなんてことはありえないそれはおかしいですわねならどうやってお祭りで遊んだんですのだから俺は祭りには行ってないんだよ Now he's screaming at her Yep, this is, this is Kei Keiji Classic Keiji No! I can't let myself get emotional If I get agitated now, that'll be like proving that there's something wrong with my head あ、ごめんみんなが信じてくれないんでつい圭一さんがそう言うなら信じてあげますわそれであの夜高野さんに会ったんですよ、oh, like, oh, okay. それで見下されたと思って、okay. She, you shouldn't have said anything. 俺は心の中で死んだんだ dead to murder you. お前なんか死んじまえって She's always watching. 高野さんってどことなくそういう雰囲気がございますので、ね、ever spray has her headband which would make sense if she who doesn't go to who doesn't take a bath where wearing a headband その気持ちわからなくもありませんでしたよ高野さんが死んだの昨日の話だどこかで焼け死んだらしいそれ Why are... 本当ですの This girl this poor girl has been through enough just get her her clothes don't Bother her with all of this nonsense. You can tell her later, but now is not the time. <laughs> Who you calling fat? He grabs us. Oh, he's alive! Satoko nodded a little. あいつにも死んじまえって念じてたんだそれ本当の話ですの嘘じゃない俺だって信じたくないけど本当の話なんだ高野さんも監督も大石も俺が死ねと念じたら本当に死んでしまったんだ For a little while, Satoko was at a loss. A long silence ensued. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you to ask me to ask you to ask me 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 to Oh, he's just gonna come out and say it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, stop it, dude. That's not true. In chapter one, they were dating. Okay. That's not true. Even the cicadas stopped crying. Even the cicadas were like, bruh, you're crazy. Her face was streaked with tears, and it stiffened even more as she looked at me in disbelief. お前の家に帰ってくるなんてことはありえないんだ。But still, he went back! And last night, he found fault with the dinner you made, yelled all sorts of things at you, and then basically boiled you in the bathtub. That couldn't possibly have happened! だから俺は、yeah. あの男を確かに殺したという証拠を確かめるために、the, the voice acting in this is phenomenal. 掘り返したんだ。And whoever voiced Satoko really Took their acting chops up to an 11 in this chapter. Keiichi, this isn't about you. Right now, this is about her and getting her medical help. But he's like, I gotta make this about me. Look, listen to what I've had to deal with. Toxic. Satoko's entire body stiffened. 
She was shrinking away, like there was someone in front of her, about to hurt her. Not a little! <笑>いや、あの、<笑><笑> I could see the revulsion in her face. I knew that she didn't want to be around me anymore. Yeah! Oh, he almost certainly has lizard eyes, yeah. You don't want to be... If somebody has lizard eyes or crazy eyes, you don't want to be around them. It's a red flag. That is nature's red flag. It's like people with dyed hair. I think I think you're doing more harm than good to Satoko right now. Thank you for saving her from the boiling bathtub. I appreciate that. Now just let, give her to, get let her go to the clinic, get better, and just stop talking. She wobbled up the shrine steps, looking like she was about to fall. Rika's home, right? Or is she at school? I immediately ran up and helped her stay on her feet. But then Satoko promptly jumped away from me. Yeah! You just confessed to being a murderer! <laughs> That outright rejection hurt a lot. I can't believe she rejected me after totally I killed somebody. She, once she got to the top of the stairs, her breathing was ragged, and she wasn't even looking at me. Get, get someone who's truly intelligent. Get Rika here. At this point, I was being ignored. Well, it was more like she didn't want to have anything to do with me. It really was a feeling of rejection. And that hurt my heart more than any blade could have. This was the path I chose for her sake. To be treated like this at the end of it all was just so saddening. Don't be naive, K.G. Mayabara. You never wanted to be repaid in the first place. You didn't do it so that Satoko would thank you. You did it so Satoko would be happy. And that was what led to this ending. Rika's house was a disaster prevention storehouse used by this town council. Ooh, it looks swanky. If you went past it, a little further through the shrine grounds, you'd apparently reach the back of the assembly hall. Satoko was heading there, walking quickly, with a gravel under her feet crunching as she went. Did she want to get there as soon as possible, or did she just want to run away? I couldn't tell. Probably both! And then, I heard the vigorous sound of wings flapping. I turned around, and saw a crow. I hadn't seen many crows since coming to Hinamizawa. I saw them a lot in my old town, though. On garbage day, they'd flock to trash collection points, peck through bags with their beaks, drag out the contents, and then have a feast. As I was remembering that... I saw a few crows flocking around the Shine's do donation box. Hey, crows! That's the poor box! <laughs> and I thought, how terrible it was for someone to leave a garbage bag in a place like that. The cicadas quieted. Breathing stopped. Thoughts ceased. Even time came to a halt. I ran over to where the crows were flocking. I ran there in order to drive a horrible idea out of my mind. I definitely hadn't wanted this. There's no way I would ever wish for this even by mistake. This was not. This was not. Uh, oh, is, the, is she dead? When I noticed the vicious approach, the crows all, crows all flapped upwards, fleeing into the sky. When the crows' big black bodies flew away, they exposed the garbage bag. Gah! Farts! <laughs> Okay, well, that's probably the creepiest thing I've seen in the game thus far. What had I seen there? The scream had escaped my throat before I understood what I was looking at. What was... What's this? Satoko came over as well, realizing something had happened. And she looked over my shoulder. Then she screamed as well. This... This wasn't... The garbage bag was crimson died in fresh blood. Ah, enough of the stupid roundabout way of saying it. That's right. Yes! Yes! It was Rika! Our friend's Toko's best friend! Always easygoing, clever as a cat, but so cute you couldn't hate her. Our friend, Rika, she, she was... Rika was stark naked. She was face up, limbs sprawled. Her eyes were like glass, just staring. 
staring up into the sky. And, and... Ah! Hika! 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 <laughs> Satoko broke down crying on the spot, and yet she still couldn't approach her friend's remains. The crows had gone through the garbage bag and dragged. Well, they dragged out an apple peel and spread it all over. No, no. Crows. They couldn't do this. <laughs> On the spot, I started vomiting. That is actually, for once, that's actually an appropriate reaction. The sour taste became a bitter one, and I threw up over and over again. Rika. She... 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 Her, her, her stomach was cut wide open. Vertically. Completely open. What the... Crud? Rika! Did someone disembowel her? <laughs> Crows. Crows couldn't have done this. And from her open stomach... Her, her organs... Her... Bowels were dragged out like like children's toys left all over the floor. She, who the who did this? They die, they die. That unbelievable sight induced oxygen deprivation in my brain. Well, thank thank you for not showing that part in the CG. I do appreciate that. Color left my vision, a pounding headache, dizzy, and I wanted to vomit. It was like the nightmarish remains of a ceremonial killing. Someone somewhere had killed Rika brought her here, laid her where her limbs sprawled out, and then cut open her stomach and, and dragged out her intestines. Red and pink viscera were sticking out of her gut, and her intestines were scattered in every every direction like, like it had been for fun. The entire ground was covered in an ocean of red and black. A few of the crows had hopped around inside that ocean. They walked through the sea of blood, leaving bloody footprints, and those footprints... There were several, several still left on Rika's body. The sinister prince made it seem like more like a bizarre ki ritual killing. I may have wished for Takano and Coach and Uisi to die, but I didn't remember ever wishing for Rika's death. I stumbled backwards, then stepped on a newspaper. A newspaper? In a place like this? The newspaper was what was covering my hatchet. I had kept it wrapped up and on my belt in order to carry Satoko. And that newspaper had fallen off. Uh, that was, yeah, that was like the ritual killing they described in Chapter 2. Who did that? Sheesh, don't scare me like that. I bent down to pick it up, and then Satoko looked at me with such disbelief as if I'd never seen, and froze. She was looking straight at me, at the hatchet, on my belt. <laughs> yep! If it's about to go from, like, a 99 to a 100. <laughs> She's gonna think we did it. <laughs> Satoko, trembling madly, backed away. <laughs> She didn't care at all that she was exposing herself through the towel. She just trembled and tried to step back from the demon in front of her. Yeah, good luck talking your way out of this one. Screaming weakly, Satoko began to run and unsteadily. Run away, that is. The way she ran away, it was so weak, so slow. So if I wanted to go after her, I could have caught up. But if I tried to grab Satoko's shoulder or something right now, she might actually go crazy. So I had to follow her and try to clear this up. That's not going to help! Rika! 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 Rika!
死ねって死んでしまえってそれでみんな死んでしまったんでしょ That's a reasonable conclusion to come to for Sudoku. Ora, so, she net the motta dag. Betsy, Tibun de Nanyo stick a kyogo in a got the nine de gozaimasho. So nice to know how to snack, see you the kiroki arimasewa. I'm gonna do you one better, DX. They're both gonna die. Kito Korosta took no kyoko, kids like a stir dagan as arimaseno. Rena and Mion will probably be the only survivor, and maybe Shion, unless Shion goes crazy. Shit, where's what's Shion doing all this? She appeared for five minutes. And then, like, disappeared, but it was implied she was gonna have a role in this. Yeah,記憶がないようにしてるだけなんじゃありませんの。第一、その名刀は何なんですのよ。説明してごらんなさいな。これは。Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're done, son. Oof. I'm glad that they removed that from this version because that I feel like is just unnecessary. どうしてですの？ちょっと意地悪だったけど、楽しくて優しい。一度は本当のニーニーかもしれないとまで思ったのに。どうしてそんな風になってしまったんですの？どうしてそんな風になってしまったんですの？どうしてそんな風になってしまったんですの？どうしてそんな風になってしまったんですの？どうしてそんな風になってしまったんですの？どうしてそんな風になって I didn't even know if I was really innocent anyway. At the very least, I killed Toko's uncle. There was no body, but I killed him. Without a doubt. At that point, I was far from innocent. And I wish Takano-san, Coach, and Uisi were dead. And that curse of mine was granted. When I wished for Takano to die, I didn't think of it as anything more than a normal thing you'd say to someone you didn't like. But then she actually did die. And I realized that if I wanted people to die, they could. And hoping it would happen again, I cursed Coach and Uisi to the same fate. So even ignoring Takano's death, Coach and Uisi's were completely premeditated crimes. Was I a killer, just like Satoko said? Was I unable to distinguish between illusion and reality, and turn into a demon without remembering it, becoming a killer who carried out Oyashiro-sama's curse? No. no, that couldn't be. It was impossible. Ah, damn it! The very word "impossible" was impossible in human eyes. All right now, how many freaking times have I said that word these past three days? Satoko had started crying again and was walking unsteadily. At first, it felt like she was still running, but now it was like she was walking away, crying from someone bullying her. I don't know. If there was an answer to that, then I wanted to know it too. Why? Why had it turned out like this? Nini, I never got it. Just so sad, but Kate sang and they got sick and they got sick. Then everyone got better. They got happy. Every day, they got better. So I guess this is why her sprite is not here because in the original version she was naked here. Thank you, Steam, for removing that. Yeah, she was right. Those days were bright and beautiful, and yet, and yet, it multiplied how messed up the situation was. I don't, I don't need that to add even more messed up situation. I don't need that. After that, Satoko and I shouted the exact same thing. <laughs> the cicadas were sneering at the spectacle. Our strange game of tag. Ah, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Eventually, I heard the murmuring of a stream. The forest parted, and a suspension bridge appeared. I don't like this. Someone's gonna fall off of it, either intentionally or accidentally. Satoko was crossing dangerously, wobbling as though she might fall off at any moment. Yeah, she gonna fall off. And when I stepped onto the bridge, it swayed a lot, causing Satoko to stagger and fall on the spot. <laughs> Satoko shouted, her hatred made very clear. It was sad. If words could cut, then this warmth flowing from my eyes would have been blood for sure. I 
I wanted to go up to her and give her a hand, but the distance between us was uncrossable. If I got any closer, Satoko would start shouting again and say things that would hurt me deeply again. I think Satoko's gonna fall here, so... I think Satoko's gonna fall, and then Keiji's gonna completely go off the deep end and just start killing people because he can, and be like, Take Yeah! Kill me! Get me out of this world! So, I couldn't approach any closer than this. Satoko, I don't know why I got this. I don't know why I got this. But... I can say this. Rika-chan was killed. I can say this. It's fair. I tightened my hand and it's into fists. This was mortifying. I wasn't crazy. You are. Hinamizawa was crazy. Ever since I wandered into it, lost on that one night. This insane world. Where I was at the festival when I wasn't, and the uncle who kill I killed was alive. Where death would just come by wishing for it. It was this world's fault. Mion and Rena started acting strangely, like they were possessed by something, too. And Coach wouldn't believe anything I had to say. And even Satoko, who I should have protected, was yelling at me like this. Was the price for killing a man supposed to be this high? Was I really going to be forced to stay in such a bitter world? I did the right thing! At least I wanted to! So then... Why? I hated it. Every time I asked why, the days Satoko and I enjoyed in peace went so wrong. Satoko, believe me. I'm not a man. What is that? What is that? I can explain it. Is this man scared? Probably. Let's go. That's fine. That's fine. Satoko didn't nod, but she seemed to be in agreement with the proposition. I clumsily took the hatchet out of my belt, then dropped it over the side of the bridge into the stream below. It falls on Rena's head and kills her. Yeah, you're still way... Yeah, like, she's still in an extremely vulnerable position right now. Like hell I would ever want to kill Satoko. You, you idiot! Ooh, ooh, is she gonna push us off? That would be interesting. It was a cunning plan, much like the one she used during club activities. Or, what she might try to do, she might try to lure us into the part of the mountain where she has all the traps set up. That would also be interesting. Putting my hands on my head and turning away would mean I couldn't attack Satoko very easily. I immediately acquiesced to her request, since it would make her feel better. <laughs> Satoko stood up, then carefully approached me from behind. And then, she actually came right up behind me. She's gonna give us a, a little nudge. Hmm. <laughs> Not to kill the mood your neighbor just gave me her left over can Nice. Congrats. She was so close. And yet I was so sad that I wasn't allowed to turn around. She's definitely gonna give us a shove. <laughs> she sees our reptile eyes. Yeah, yeah, we're reptile eyes. I could hear that Satoko was still crying, but her voice was gentle just the same. Actually, Satoko, sometimes people can just do evil things. Was she speaking literally right now? Or was she trying to admonish me? I couldn't tell. あの人たちもケイチさんと同じものに乗り移られていたのかもしれない。あの時は殺されるとしか思わなかったから、そこまでは考えが及ばなかったけど。今ならわかる。あれは乗り移った。
何か悪いものの仕業だった佐藤子何の話だ It was less like she was talking to me and more like she was talking to herself like she was confessing to my back 分かってるんですの私身に覚えがないわけじゃないんですのよ True Satoko's voice started to become mixed with sobs Her pained voice tore at my heart But I didn't know what Satoko was talking about Flashback? This late? Once, when Satoko was playing hide and seek at the shrine grounds, she climbed onto the roof of the storehouse for ritual implements, which everyone said not to go near, and hid. Then Satoko saw she could get in through a window meant for ventilation. For Satoko, the word curse was plenty scary, but she was more curious about what was inside the unknown storehouse. She removed the grating on the window, which was already hanging off, slid her small body into it, and climbed down inside. Didn't we see an event like that in Chapter 2 and we're like, we couldn't get through that, but maybe like Rika or Satoko could? It was too dark to see much, but after descending, she realized just how high up she'd been. Despite the darkness, she could see a few things around her thanks to the faint light coming in for the air window. And to her disappointment, it was just a regular old storehouse. She tried to leave, but the door was locked up tight from the outside, and it was made not to open from within. She would have to go back through the ventilation window she'd come from. But the window was high up on the wall, and there was no way she would have been able to climb back up. So Toko desperately tried not to cry, and racked her brain thinking of a way to get up there. There was a lot of bird cage looking things hanging by chains from the ceiling. She took the hanging chains and strung them along the wall. If she climbed up the bundle of chains, she might be able to manage to climb up to the ventilation window. There was nothing else she could do, so she had to try. And try she did. It was dark and creepy, and she didn't want to stay there forever. The more she thought about that, the more she panicked. She climbed the bundle of chains. Sotoko could hear the clunks and clanes of everything creaking under her weight. And then, just as her hand reached the window, one of the metal fixtures she'd used to stick the chains on the wall flew off, and all the chains began to pull loudly and furiously every which way. Spurred on by the sounds behind her, she managed to get back onto the roof from the window. Because of the weight of the falling bundle of chains, the other fixtures broke. And then one of the big bird cages hanging from the ceiling fell to the floor with a huge noise. Under it was an image of Oyoshiro-sama, his vessel, and the cage took off one of the arms, then trapped under some other implements beneath it. It didn't take very long for her to grow scared of what she'd done. The deafening noise she could, uh, could be heard from the rest of the shrine grounds. A few other children heard it and gathered around. And, of course, Rika was one of them. Then, Rika's father, the shrine's priest, with an angry look ran over. And then, as for what happened next, it was painful to remember. The only one who knew where Rika's parents kept the key to the ritual storehouse was Rika. So... He scolded her, saying that this happened because Rika pulled a prank and hid me there. He was very angry and menacing. Just looking at him was enough to frighten anyone. Uh-oh, that's not good. He exposed Rika's back, took a strangely shaped ritual cane or something, and struck her with it several times. Wow, all right! Rika's words at the time, It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That pitiful voice. I still can't get it out of my head. I should have said it was me. I should have said so to save my best friend from that false accusation, without being afraid of Rika's father's terrible temper. Rika gritted her teeth and cried at the crime she didn't remember doing. Ever since then, the world had been strange. だったり父も母も卓流に消えた意地悪だったおばも死んだけど誰よりも私を可愛がってくれた兄兄私を捨てて家出してしまったそしてそして圭一さんが転校してきてやっと楽しい毎日が戻ってきたと思ったのに今度
親しい人から中に殺してみんな殺してから最後に殺すんだってだから圭一さんもたたりにやられてあおう<笑>きっと今度はレナさんやミオンさんがたたられてしまうんですわそして殺したり殺されたりもういいや<笑>いや落ち着けおっさんとこたたりなんかない誰もお前をいじめたりなんかしないって When I turned around, I was thrust away with amazing force off the bridge. Given my hands were awkwardly placed on my head, I couldn't take the fall and lost my balance. And I'd been pushed not onto the bridge, but to the side. Towards the stream. No, this can't be happening! No! As one last miracle, I was allowed to grab a cord hanging from the bridge. Far below me was the stream. We were pretty high up, and below were rocks of all sizes. If I fell, it clearly wouldn't be pretty. The entire bridge was tilting under my body weight. My frail little grip probably wouldn't last another minute before my fingers had let to let go. Sadoga! Sadoga! I didn't understand myself, what I meant by shouting her name then. Was I asking her to save me? Or was I asking her why she did this? Finally, everything came back into fo focus. And I saw Satogo. And I was surprised at what an odd expression she had. Reptile eyes? It was the first time I'd seen it. It was an expression of righteous anger meant only for those who needed to die. Whoa! <laughs> yeah! Hi! Satoko? Yeah, I, okay. Yikes, alright. As she screamed, she jerked the bridge to and fro. She didn't have to do that. I was going to fall anyway. I feel like I can't use any of these as thumbnails, because I don't want to put outright spoilers in the, in the thumbnails. It's going to have to be the suspension bridge. Sadoko. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> I don't know what my face looked like at the time. But it seemed like it was enough to quell Satoko's agitation. <laughs> oh. Oh, she thinks it's we, she thinks we're fake, Ichi. Satoko didn't seem to have any more desire to listen to what I had to say. And for that to happen to, at the very end like this was tragic. Isn't she like dying of heat stroke right now, by the way? Have we forgotten this? <laughs> お前に幸せになってさえもらえればよかった。俺たちはダメなんだ。お前が笑っていないとダメなんだ。だから俺が消えたら、もう笑ってくれ。それだけ約束してくれないか。Yeah, And those were the last words Satoko ever said to me. Those sad, tragic, and altogether unrewarding words. What on earth was I? My desire to make Satoko happy ended up like this. Where did I go first go wrong? And what was the mistake I made? When did I make it? Was I the crazy one? Or was it Hina Mizawa? Even after all of this, I thought I wasn't crazy at all. It was this eerie world that it was crazy. This world I'd accidentally wandered into that one night. Because 
That fun world, where I never doubted all the crazy times we had as a club would go on forever. It couldn't possibly have transformed into such an abnormal world. That fun world wouldn't have ever ended with this. With Satoko pushing me to my death. In the end, I was going to be swallowed up by this crazy world. And disappear. No. I'd probably already disappeared. Yes. Probably. On the night of Watanagashi. I'm sure that in the world I really belong to, I had vanished that night and everyone was worried. It was laughable that I had taken this long to figure out I wasn't around anymore. Oyashiro sama's curse on that fifth year was Satoko's uncle dying and me disappearing. In the real world, Satoko had already been freed. Maybe my friends were all lamenting my disappearance and valiantly trying to get back on their feet. And, even though they were down to four people, the club would reopen and they would have a good time without me, waiting for the day that I would come back. I'm sorry, everyone. I couldn't come back home. But this is what I wished for. It was my wish for Satoko's smile and my duty as her nini. At this point, there will be nobody left to torture you. Because Satoshi and I, it took two years, but we succeeded. That annoying, toothy smile of yours we wanted to see it one more time. My pain wasn't gentle or merciful. It was a sharp pain. Violent, powerful, and ruthless. What little compassion I had receded in the span of a moment. And now, I could die. I could say goodbye to this insane world. Farewell, crazed Hinamizawa. Thanks for giving me the psychic power to kill people whenever I wanted. If you still allow it, I'll wish for one last thing. The death of this very world, of this crazed Hinamizawa. So that nobody would ever have to find themselves lost here again. Higurashi when they cry. Is that the end, or is there going to be more? New tips acquired. Research notes number two. Demon witnessed the final showdown. All right. Let's see the research notes. Oyashirosama. Nobody really knows what characters to use to write Oyashirosama. Knowing this is hard, partly because, depending on the time period, he has been called with various titles, with subtle changes to his name, and nobody knows the real one. <sighs> the only thing all time periods agree on is that the four syllables O, Ya, Shi, and Ro are always used. There is a theory stating the shrine, or Yashiro, dedicated to Oyashiro-sama itself, became an object of worship, and that people began calling it O Yashiro-sama, or Lord Honorable Shrine, but this doesn't make a bit of sense. I don't know whether this is related, but people say the Furude family, the most respected bloodline in terms of worshipping O Yashiro-sama, actually inherited his blood. And in the legend, the Furude family passes down, if for eight generations in a row the firstborn child is a girl, the eighth daughter will be the reincarnation of O Yashiro-sama. What? Oh, are they saying that about Rika? If we go by this legend, the characters used for Oyashiro-sama should be O for Honorable, Ya for Eight, and Shiro for Generation. These character assignments are simply something I've thought up. There is no way to verify it. If this is true, then Oyashiro-sama would have been named as such under the assumption he would come again. The second coming of an object of worship can be seen in several religions, so this isn't unusual. But a few of these religions call the second coming of their object of worship a day of judgment, or something along those lines. And we must not forget they meant, mean it to be the end of the world. Hey, you're talking about Jesus. Rika Furude, pampered and loved dearly by the elderly folk in the village. The rumors say she is the 8th generation, and Oyashiro-sama. I do not know the family tree of the Furudes, but at the very least, I can confirm that for the past two generations, the first child has been a girl. Rika Furude watches over Hinamizawa. If the village were to lose the, her protection, what would happen? Would peace between man and demon be lost? Would it once again create a hellish landscape where man-eating demons run rampant? A gruesome feast of the demons who suddenly remembered how delicious the weak humans were, who could only cry, scream, and run for their lives. 
What would that look like? Just imagining it is enough to make my heart pound with excitement. Okay, whoever's writing this is the person who killed Rika, almost certainly. We don't know who wrote this, though. Detective plus Tatiragoshi. <laughs> we had all of the tips in Tatiragoshi. <laughs> so we get no more tips after that. Hmm. Rika dies and the world ends. Uh, Rika died before the world ended in Chapter 2. Chapter 2, like, they found Rika's corpse that was several days old at the end of it. So, 